the DCS 1.5.8 branch has received an update that has made the targeting pod or T-pod mostly functional. You can now laze for laser guided bombs, buddy laze, and also use it to guide mavericks. DCS 2.2 at present does not have these features, I expect they will be added soon, if not when the merge happens with DCS 2.5 at the end of the month. The Lightning 2 or T-Pod is an external sensor. It features a TV camera, an infrared camera, and a laser designator. You can mount the T-Pod on any of the inboard wing stations or on the center line. Should you need to mount an ECM and the T-Pod at the same time, however, you will have to have a T-Pod on the wing pylons. In this situation, your aircraft will be in balance, and I recommend putting a GBU-12 as a counterweight. Be careful using the DGP when your head's down, because we currently do not have any autopilot features, it is very easy to find yourself in a roll. In fact, for this example, I'm going to be sitting on a roof just to make it easier for myself, while I explain things. Let's go over the basics of the T-Pod. You can access the T-Pod on either your left or right display by going to the menu, and selecting the T-Pod option. From here we are on the standby page. We can enable and disable the T-Pod display by pressing the standby button. From here we have a large number of options. Our laser code is displayed at the top. Note you cannot change your laser code whilst you are on the ground. It will automatically revert to 1, 1, 1, 1 every time there is weight on the wheels. So change your laser code after taking off. Next we have the CCD and FLIR modes. This is a tele television mode and an IR mode. In addition, when in IR mode, you can change between white hot and black hot. Beneath that we have the zoom controls, you can zoom in and zoom out. We have the data menu, most of this is not functional. These control features such as the video recording system and the symbology brightness settings. You can close the menu by pressing data again. Beneath that we have the wide view and narrow view field of view. This will allow you to toggle between a zoomed in and zoomed out mode. Beneath that we have the area track and point track modes. Area track will track a point on the ground. Point track will track any object with a distinct outline, such as moving vehicles or buildings that are distinct from their background. Across from that we have the LSS mode. This is your laser spot track mode for the TGP, or T-Pod. It is fundamentally redundant on the, on the Harrier, since it features a laser spot tracker inside the nose, which is easier to use. On the right we have the TDC toggle button. Pressing this on will allow you to slave your TDC controls from your throttle onto the targeting pod and allow you to slew the camera around. There is a secondary TDC mode available on the T-Pod. You can enable this by pressing sensor slit switch down twice rapidly. This will enable HTS or the HOTAS control mode. This will change the functionality of your sensor select switch to provide easier use of the T-Pod. For example, if I press sensor select switch left, I can cycle my view between wide and narrow. If I press sensor select switch aft, I can switch between area track and point track. And if I hold sensor select switch right for more than one second and release, I can switch between the TV mode and the FLIR mode. If I press sensor select switch right short, whilst in FLIR mode I can enable white hot and black hot. Bear in mind when using this mode, you are unable to designate the aircraft's primary target. This mode is primarily used for searching for out targets and observation prior to engagement. If you wish to use it to mark a target, the best way to do that is to find your target, put your cursor on it or nearby, disable HTS mode by pressing sensor select switch down twice, re-enable the TDC and then locate your target. Bear in mind the aircraft target point is only updated when you release the TDC slew button. If you wish to track a moving object, you need to make sure you are in point track mode, and you simply put your cursor over your target. It will then follow it. Bear in mind this does not update the DMT actively, so if you are bombing a, if you are dropping a laser guided bomb on a tank, for example, if it has moved a long distance since you first acquired it it is best to lose the acquisition deliberately and reacquire it. There is no lock on button required, all you have to do is slow your camera over the target and it should point out the target for you. 
like so. At the top we have the laser options. From here you can see the word safe. If I press this it will toggle the laser between armed and safe. This button will enable the laser rangefinder. This one will fire the laser. And this is the laser mode. Currently in training mode. In training mode the laser pretends to fire. It does not actually emit anything. If you wish to use marker mode, this will enable a visual marker to anybody wearing NVGs. It is not visible on the nav flare, however, so take note, use, this is only visible using NVGs. It is functional mostly as a spotting guide for other aircraft. For example, you could point your TGP at a target, fire your laser by pressing fire. You can see it's now arcing a laser. Arc. Whilst this is firing, a big green line will be visible in anyone's NVGs pointing toward where your TGP is looking. And finally, we have the laser mode. In laser mode, you will use this for designating targets for your laser guided bombs or even buddy lasing for your wingmen. You can enable the laser firing as mentioned before by pressing fire. An L will flash when the laser is firing. If you wish to stop your laser firing, simply press the fire button. If you wish to change your laser code, you can only perform this while you are in the air, and every time you land or are on the ground, it will revert to 1111, so bear this in mind. In order to change your laser code, you need to go to the dual mode tracker. Best way to do that is go to menu, enable the dual mode tracker, and press code. You can then enter your laser code on the upfront controller. The T pod is indicated on your HUD with an octagon, as shown here. Inside that you can see the aircraft's target point. Note that the aircraft target point does not update until you release the T-Pod. So for example if I slew the T-Pod across, now release, it updates. One thing to note is that the aircraft target does not update in real time with the T-Pod cursor. If I for example start following this tank, the target does not update visually on the HUD. Although the T-Pod is in fact tracking your target, it's not updating correctly on the HUD. If you are performing a CZRP drop of a laser guided bomb, I recommend that you ensure to acquire a lock shortly before your drop. So as you get close to the run in for your drop, simply move your TDC cursor again and reacquire to ensure an updated aim point for your bomb. Failure to do so could result in your bomb being dropped far too far away from your target for it to acquire. So let's move on to weapon employment using the T-Pod. Start off by enabling your T-Pod menu, turn standby off, turn the target designation cursor on, check your laser code, in this case I have 1688. If you wish to change it, you need to go to the DMT, press code, and enter a new laser code on the upfront controller. 555 for example, press enter to change it. Now go back to the T-Pod and you can see the laser code has changed. Remember this laser code will reset each time you are on the ground to 1111. So if you are using a specific laser code, ensure that you change it after takeoff. Next I will slew my TDC cursor to lock the T-Pod onto a target, so I'll move over my target area. You can see the cross in the distance. I will now press the TDC slew gently and release. When I release, it locks onto the ground underneath the cursor. I will now zoom in using the on screen buttons, find a target, and I will prepare to engage it. So, we will fence in our weapon system. I'm using GBU 12s for this run. I will set up my laser, you press the safe button to arm it, switch to laser mode, and press fire to fire it, you will see a flashing air when the laser is firing. Remember to trim out your aircraft well before doing this, as if you spend too much time staring at your screen you can find yourself flying at all sorts of angles, or even crash. So keep in mind of that since we do not currently have an autopilot. Now all I have to do is follow my on-screen cues for a CCRP drop, and release the bomb. When the bomb is released I will simply press the fire button to fire my laser and the laser guided bomb will guide in on my target. If 
five seconds from target, holding down the pickle button. There's the release, trim the aircraft out to counter out the weight change. Go to your TGP, correct your aim if you need to. Press the fire to enable your laser, you'll see a flashing L, and now you simply wait for your bomb to hit. Remember to disable your laser when you are done, and come around for your next target. Remember that you cannot use the HTS mode to designate targets, as it does not update the aircraft's internal target position. If you wish to enable a target from this mode, you will need to disable HTS, enable the TDC mode, and then slew briefly to re-enable the target point. Every time you release the TDC slewing key, with the teapot, it will automatically update the location of the aircraft target. To engage a moving target, simply slew your camera onto your object of interest, enable point track mode, zoom in, slew across your target, and release, and it should pick up the target for you. There you go. Bear in mind that the DMT is used for your aim point, and it does not update in real time to reflect the position of your teapod. This means that if you have acquired your target a long time before your drop of the bomb, your aim point could be off too far for the laser guided bomb to correct for. The best way to avoid this is to ensure you acquire a lock shortly before your run, so you can deliberately lose lock and then reacquire it. This will update the DMT on the new point. Alternatively, you can control the DMT itself by disabling TDC enabling the TV pod, and then simply updating your aim point manually as you fly towards your target. So I'll enable the laser, make sure it is in laser mode, and follow the cues on my HUD into my target. As the target slips further away, I will update my DMT to match to ensure my aim point is accurate. Being a laser guided bomb, there is a reasonable degree of lenience, so you do not need to keep the, the aim point of the DMT completely accurate or even up to date. If the vehicle has moved a long way from its starting point when you checked it, you could of course be dropping in a different location. I believe this to be a bug at the current moment. So, holding down the pickle button, bomb release, trim the aircraft out, enable the laser by pressing fire, note the flashing L and maintain level flight and wait for impact. In addition to using laser guided bombs, you can also use the T-Pod to help acquire targets for your Mavericks. So if I enable the T-Pod, cursor and turn off standby, air to ground, select my Mavericks, ensure they are warmed up, Master arm on. I'll now line up my T-Pod cursor with the target area. Press the TDC slew to lock the ground. Fine tune my aim. I'll zoom in. Now all I have to do is uncage my Maverick by pressing the uncage button. You can see it is now looking at the same location as the targeting pod is. Now if I press the sensor select switch forward to enable IRMV control mode, and press the TTC action button to lock, and then simply press the pickle button to rifle. And there we go. Exactly the same process as it is for the DMT, essentially, you just have a much more powerful sensor to acquire your targets with. If I re-enable the T-pod, One last note, the dual mode tracker should be able to track the moving T-Pod target or even a moving laser spot target in the future. At present it cannot. Zeus has confirmed that it is in fact going to be enabled later on in early access. And uh, in the meantime we just have to put up with the issues. Additionally, although there are no patch notes for the update, I've also discovered that the TACAN system has been enabled for the KC-130 tanker. 
That means you can use the TACAN system now to locate your KC-130 tanker in missions.